Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to design Power Apps galleries leveraging out of the box controls and properties. We will leverage the button control, shapes, create hover effect, style our galleries in light mode, dark mode. Basically, we will transform the out of the box gallery design in a matter of minutes. So let's check it out in action. I have a power app in which I have connected a SharePoint list, text column, the title of the item, number column tracks the percentage of work completed, a couple of choice columns to track the progress and the priority. To represent this data in power apps, I will add a gallery control and I will connect this gallery control to my data source. The standard gallery layout style applies. In the properties for the gallery, you can change this layout. There are various layout styles that you can choose from. You can start from a blank gallery wherein you add your own controls or pick from any of the provided styles. Now these out of the box styles are effective to represent data. However, many a times, we would like to style that same data in the gallery in a different format. This is a gallery control that is connected to that same data set and I have designed and styled it to represent the data from my SharePoint list in this fashion. I have the title, the status, the priority of the task, and then the percentage complete. I am representing it in this horizontal bar-like fashion. I've also changed the colors or the theme of my gallery depending upon the selection that the user makes. Currently, the dark mode is on. If I swap this to light mode, you can see how the gallery styles change. In light mode, I also added the colors to show the progress for the number column that shows the complete percentage of that task. Now, all of this I have done leveraging out of the box controls and properties no usage of SVGs or the HTML control. So let's try and transform this gallery on the fly. Now for this gallery control, I have started with the title and subtitle layout, which basically gives me a couple of label controls, an icon control, and a separator to distinguish between the different items in the gallery. Whenever we are designing the gallery, it's important to note that we are always modifying the first item of the gallery. And to do that, I will click this pencil icon. So I'm in the context of the first item of the gallery. If I was to increase the height of this item, notice how all the other items are also following that same pattern because I'm basically manipulating the template of this gallery. The gallery control has a property called template fill. I'll give it a different color. I'll pick white smoke. It's kind of a light gray. I will create this separation effect between the items of the gallery by setting the template padding of the gallery. So let's say I set this to 20, which kind of segregates the different items in the gallery. I will simply remove the separator control. If I preview this app, you can see how the items of my gallery have this card-like effect. It would be nice to give hover effect when the user hovers on an item and the gallery control out of the box has a property called transition. And there are two transition types which allow us to add this visual effect while hovering over the gallery items. The push effect, so as the user hovers over an item, you can see how it gets pushed. Or you can change this to a pop-like effect. Currently for this gallery, I have a couple of these label controls. So notice the label control does not give me the cursor hand effect. So the user kind of doesn't get that indication that this is clickable. But the icon control does give me that effect. For this gallery control, 
edit the template item, go ahead and insert the button control. The X property set it to zero, so it sits on the left. The Y property set it to zero, so it sits on the top. The width, you set it to parent dot template width. And the height, we set it to parent dot template height. The text property, I'll set it to empty. The fill property, I will change this to transparent. The button control has a hover fill property. Let's change this to self dot fill. Pressed fill property. The color I will change to self dot fill. If I preview the app, observe how the cursor hand icon appears for all of the controls that we've added inside the gallery control. And the reason is because this button control is sitting right at the top of all of the other controls. This icon control, I will go ahead and delete it. The scroll bar, if you would like to turn that off and create like a step navigation effect, turn off the scroll bar effect and add the navigation effect. So now the user can step through the different items in the gallery. If you would like to increase the navigation step, maybe show the next five items. Now this label control, I will move it and place it on the top right. And for the text property of the label control, I will append text that says, this is the ID of the item. You can also add emojis here. Windows plus dot. It will open the option to select emojis. Let's say I pick the tag emoji. You can see that tag is come in play right here. Now in SharePoint, in columns, we have the ability to format our columns. And SharePoint has this nice choice pill effect where you can add color and rounded styling to each choice that is being represented. I can do something similar in Power Apps as well. So for my gallery, insert a button control. This button, I will place it right here. I will rename this to BTN Priority. The text property will be this item dot priority, which is my choice column dot value. Now the control that I just added in this gallery is sitting on top of my main button control, which is taking the entire height and width of my template. It's very important that this button control, which I've renamed to BTN template, always sits right at the top of all the other controls. Now the button control that I added to showcase the priority has a border radius. The higher you set the border radius, it will create a more rounded effect around the edges to give different colors based upon the priority value for the fill property of this button control. I will leverage the switch function, switch the value coming in from the priority column. If this is critical, I will put the color dark red. If it's medium, blue, and if the value is low, put dark golden rod. So now it's demonstrating the priority value in the form of that pill-like effect. For the number type column, I know that the number values can only go from zero to a hundred. So for my gallery template item, here I will insert a rectangle shape. Let's say I place it right here and I will increase its width 300 in my case. The fill property, I will set this to gray. I will rename this to 
shape not complete i will add another shape that i will superimpose on top of this rectangle shape so i'll make sure its width is also set to 300 and this one will be shape complete remember the main template button must be right at the top shape complete rectangle if you look at its width it's set to 300 i want to set the width dynamically so i will use this item dot complete that's my numeric column this number that i get is based on 100 my rectangle width is 300 so i will need to ensure that i simply multiply this by 3 i will also insert a label control to show the percent value that is completed so if i was to preview this this specific item which is project report update it's 100% complete so the bar is completely filled this is 45% complete zero and so and so forth Something very similar is what I have implemented right here. Here's my main button control that spans the entire height and width of the template. My label controls, I am showcasing the value, but to that as well, I'm appending some additional text. If the priority is critical, I'm appending this exclamation to it. If it's high, arrow up. If it's low, arrow down. Same thing for the status control now here i can also add emojis the rectangle colors fill property i have changed it depending upon how much percent of the task is complete if it's greater than or equal to 75 i've put in the green color if it's less than or equal to 25 i have given it a different color the same concept I have applied with a different theme. Where I'm changing dark mode to light mode on the fly. Basically, when the user selects this toggle control, I'm setting a variable called theme and I'm providing it some properties like the background color, color, gallery template fill property. And for my gallery control, wherever I was hard coding the colors, now I'm leveraging that variable of mine, which is theme. So theme dot gal template fill. So based on it being light or dark, it automatically sets the color to white or purple. For all of my controls that are showcasing the data, if you look at its color property, I'm leveraging theme dot color. When it's light, the theme dot color is set to black. When it's dark, it's set to white. Plus. Since it's a variable, if I open this, Power Apps will actually showcase the colors as well associated with it. So notice the background color of my screen is this dark purple. The text color that I'm leveraging is white and the gallery template fill color is purple. If I change to light, this time notice the theme colors have changed. Here is another example of a gallery control that I have styled leveraging the same technique. Notice my screen has this background color to it. It's a light purplish background. Now for my main button control inside the gallery, the fill property is set to transparent. So how did I get this white background effect for the items of the gallery? Plus, if you notice, it has these rounded edges. And the way I did that is by leveraging another button control that follows the same principles as the template button control. There are two key differences though. One, I have placed this as the last item of the gallery, simply selected, reorder, and sent to back. Plus, the fill property of this, I have set it to white. So basically two button controls, one that gives this hand cursor effect on all the items in this gallery and the other that's creating that white background effect with rounded edges. Observe the usage of emojis again. 
I've added the tag to showcase the ID of the item. Here I'm showcasing the date. So I've added the calendar emoji. Here I'm showcasing the type of the request that the user makes. The type is a choice column in my SharePoint list. Here where I'm representing that data, I'm leveraging that switch function and I'm appending a few emojis based upon the type. Here I've leveraged the button control to create that choice spill like effect. The color property, I am setting that based on the status. Whereas the fill property, I am leveraging the color fade function to fade the color of this button control by 0 0.8. So it has that lighter shade fill property based upon the main color property. Here I've also leveraged the rectangle shape control and the color of the shape depends upon the status. So go ahead and apply these techniques and create different gallery design experiences based upon your scenarios. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.